I was in a meeting with a customer who was getting chewed out by his boss because they were spending more in Azure than he thought they should, and he wanted answers. And if we couldn't find those answers, that was going to kill the whole project and could put the entire company's effort in moving to the cloud at risk. So I did what any Azure engineer or consultant would do. We checked out their cost analytics, and we found that virtual machines were a huge part of their expense. And that's where things went sideways. I asked them if they had right-sized those virtual machines for the work that they were doing, and they looked at me like I was from Mars. They had no idea how to figure that out, and the manager said, the cloud should be able to right-size all my VMs for me. Translation being that he wanted the Goldilocks size for every VM automatically. And that got me thinking, why doesn't the cloud just do that? Now you've heard the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, right? There's a little girl who's out in the woods playing and she finds a house. She goes in, she smells the porridge and sits down for the first bowl and it is too hot. She tries the next one and it's too cold and the last one is just right. So I did some research and it turns out that an average of 84% of all virtual machines are either too big or too small. And this is wasting your performance, your money, or both. So I'm gonna share with all of you the things that I learned that saved that project and reduced their cost and allowed them to continue their migration into the cloud. And we're gonna keep IT simple in the process. And the key is in your VM's performance data. And that's how we'll know which VM size is right for each virtual machine. And to do this, we're gonna need some data. We're gonna need a way to collect and store that data and we're going to need a way to change the sizes automatically based on that data. Let me show you how. Here in the Azure portal, search for your Log Analytics workspace. Over on the left blade, click the Legacy Agent Configuration, then Windows Performance Counters at the top. And we need two specific counters. So if they're not here, just click to add a new counter and then type in memory slash available M bytes. Then we're going to add another one for processor information slash percent processor time. And these counters are going to look at the CPU and memory usage on the VM, which is what basically makes up the VM size in the first place. And it's going to compare it to the size of the virtual machine that it is, so you'll know if your VMs are too small, too big, or just right. Now the sample rate over on the right side is how often each data point is going to be gathered. Now the more frequent the data points you store in the workspace means the more data you're storing and the more that increases the workspace's cost. So the way I would implement this is to start off with 30 second increments and then after you've gone through a few scaling cycles and got things mostly just right, then I would increase the sample rate up to 60 or 90 seconds and that way you'll help to reduce your cost. Now to help you unlock all this data, we need an agent deployed to each VM. So scroll down on the left until you find your virtual machines and then find the ones that are not related to this workspace and click on one of the names. And then at the top, click the connect button and just rinse and repeat until all your VMs are connected to this workspace. And this is a great point to introduce you to Josh Lieben. He created the solution that we're all looking at today and that saved my bacon with my customer. And the link to this blog is in the video description down below. And all the magic for this solution is baked into a PowerShell module. And we're gonna walk through this in two parts, testing for a single VM and then implementing this for scale. Now, if you click this link right over here, that'll take you to the PowerShell gallery and you can click right over here to download the module by itself. And now on your laptop or a management server, go ahead and open a PowerShell environment and then paste in the code, download the modules. All right, so we've got Log Analytics set up and our agents are deployed and you have the module. The only thing we need to do now is wait. That's because this is a data-driven solution, so we need some data. Now, if you just deployed and configured your log analytics today, the default time to have enough data to be able to make good choices in sizing is going to be six days. And that's because that's a good representation of your VM's overall performance. Any smaller than that, like six hours, and you wouldn't really know what that VM is doing. Think about this like the stock market. Every day, the market goes up and it goes down. And if you zoom in and look at one single day, those swings are gonna look huge. But over time, when you zoom out, that flattens the curve so you can see all of the larger trends. So the more data you have over time, the better choices you can make. Now, once you do have enough data, we can just run this command, set-vm right size, 
and that needs a target VM name. And a quick note, if your VMs are domain joined, you'll also wanna add the dash domain parameter. And then we also need your workspace ID. Now I'm running this script here with the verbose output so I can see what's going on. And I've also added the what if output. That way it's not actually gonna do something right now. It's just gonna show me what it would do. And of course there's many other parameters that you can add and you can dig into that back in Josh's blog if you're interested. Now when you kick off the script, it's going to look at the performance data for the virtual machine and see how much of that CPU and RAM it's using and then recommend the best size based on your usage. Now, one other thing to be aware of is that when you do resize a virtual machine, it doesn't happen on the fly. It's gonna take a reboot. So you should plan to have this script run during your maintenance windows. Or if you want to force it right now, you can just add the dash force parameter. And you can see from the output over here what size we had and what size it's wanting to move us to so that we can make better use of all of our resources. And that's how we do a single virtual machine, but we scale things up with an Azure automation account. And you can use an existing one, but I'm gonna build a new one here. So on the first screen, you just fill out your subscription, resource group, and your region as usual. Give your automation account a name and then click next. Now the critical thing here is that you have that box checked for system assigned managed ID. And that's how we're gonna grant the permissions to the automation account to do its thing. Complete the rest of the build, and then inside the automation account, over on the left, you wanna scroll down until you find identity, and then click that button right over there to select Azure Role Assignments. Click to add a new role assignment at the top. Now for the scope, you'll wanna select your subscription, and then for the role here, we wanna add the virtual machine contributor. That role will allow you to stop and start your VMs and to change sizes. Now, once you click add on that, it might take a few minutes before the portal actually shows it, but trust me, it's there. Now we need to add another role and so do the same process. And this time the role is going to be log analytics reader. Once that's done, go back to your automation account and then on the left, find modules, then click to add a new module at the top. Then you wanna click right over here to open the gallery and search for ADDRS. So click on the module and then press select at the bottom. Make sure that the latest version is selected here and click the import button. So in a minute or two, the import is going to finish and then we can go over to the runbooks on the left. Click to add a new runbook at the top, then give it a name, something like auto resize. The type here is going to be PowerShell and then again, select the latest version of the module that we selected earlier. You can throw in a description if you like and then click create. And you can copy this block of code from the second blog post that's in the video description. It's where Josh walks you through how to set up the runbook. This first command is gonna authenticate you through Azure Automation. And the next command is the one that I suggest you use here. This will auto resize all of the VMs in an entire resource group all at once. Once you pasted that code in, just click save at the top. Now you could publish it right now, or you could click the test pane and just run a test before you publish it. That way you know your code's working. And of course you could add other things here like input parameters or for each loops or error handling. And if you do, please do comment down below on where that code is so everybody can benefit. Once your runbook is all set up, now we need to make it happen. So we're gonna click link schedule at the top, then click the first box to set up your schedule, give it a name and a description, set a start time and a time zone. Then set this for reoccurring. And I suggest you let this run once a week, that way all of the six days of data is present so you can make the best choices possible. And I'll let this run on a Saturday because that's when my maintenance window is, and then click create at the bottom. Now you're good to go right here, but if you've added extra parameter inputs, you'll need to add that to the second box so that the runbook has all those parameters so we can just do its thing. And with the runbook in place and scheduled to run automatically, you can reduce your VM cost by a ton, just like my customer did, all while keeping IT simple. And if you really wanna keep things simple, click over here to learn about the ultimate power tool for managing your servers. Happy learning.